So good afternoon, everybody. Good evening for those of you all the way on the East Coast, and good morning for those of you very early, maybe in uh, in Hawaii. It's still early enough. Who knows when you're watching this? Hopefully you're here with us live. If not, we are recording this for you. We have got Facebook. It just changed everything. And by the time this webinar is done, they'll probably have changed everything again on us, and we'll start all over. But what I've done is I have joined here by two experts when it comes to the world of Facebook. The first one, I'd like you to say hello. Jimmy Mackin, say hi to everybody. Hey, everyone. Thanks Thanks for coming out today. We're looking forward to uh, putting on a great show for you today. All right. So now you know Jimmy's voice. He's that fast-moving East Coast voice for us. we got Massachusetts represented. Let's go to the dangerous area from Massachusetts, and let's get to Brooklyn and represent Chris Smith. Say hello to everybody. Hey, Chad. Thanks for having me on, Jimmy. <laughs> Excited. You know, our team's still playing, of course, here in New York. So, uh... <laughs> You know, we're excited about that, and obviously there's so many things happening right now with Facebook. I mean, I feel like it's a, almost an entirely new platform, so I'm excited to get into this and, you know, glad to have Chad hosting. So we'll get right to it, and uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All right. We're going to go fast through this stuff. There is a lot of information. I mean, gosh, Jimmy, Chris, and I have been on the phone for the last half hour going over it, and we had to stop our conversation to get into this. So I want to jump in, let you guys know we do have the hashtag. Hashtag FB changes where it'll be on Twitter as well. We'll be sharing information even after the webinar, still answering questions for you there. But let's jump right into it. The things we really want to talk about, we want to talk about the new Facebook and what's going on out there. And those three things, we've got Jimmy, content that matters, complete control and sharing your story. So let's jump right into what we've got and the big three changes that are happening out there. What do you want to mm -hmm. say before we even get into it officially? Well, the, the first thing I'd like to mention is, you know, when, when preparing for this webinar, you know, when Facebook rolls out new updates, usually it's, you know, they're, they're tweaking some existing apps or pages or profiles. And, and what I've found with all the recent changes over the last month, that the, the platform has transformed. It, it looks nothing like it did a month ago. And these little things that we saw coming through, like through subscribe and ticker and all these things, when you add them all up, as we're going to be doing in this webinar, you realize that this is the new Facebook. This is not, you know, uh, the summer Facebook. This is the new Facebook going forward, and uh, you know, we're really excited to share with you today all the changes because it, it is, it has, and this is, a, I guess, a big takeaway here, Chad. It has transformed. It looks nothing like, it acts nothing like the old Facebook. No, that's for sure. And Chris, before we jump into all of it, and I let Jimmy start talking about some of the changes, what's your quick overall view of everything that's happened with Facebook? Well, well I think I, that, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did I say Jimmy? I meant Chris. Come on in, Chris. What's yeah, your overall sure. view? Yeah, my overall view is that what I think what people's takeaway today should be is that as much that's changed from a user experience point and maybe from a design standpoint and a functionality standpoint, the same common threads that worked quote unquote before will still work. You're going to see that as much as changed has stayed the same, but I think that it's it is definitely gone from kind of a you know, 101 level for the average user to get it all to where I think we've now entered Facebook 201 territory, and that's why I think a call like this is needed and very popular. All right, so we've gone to two, 201 here. We're, we've moved on, but let's talk about the first big change that's gone on out there, Jimmy, and that's content that matters. Tell us about this amazing ticker that's scrolling down the side of our screen now. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to go ahead and jump into the live Facebook right now as we start uh, talking about the ticker. Uh, so this has been a really hotly debated uh, you know, addition to, to the Facebook platform, which is a ticker, because most of us, uh, we thought it was really kind of annoying when we first saw it coming through. Uh, but what the ticker is right now is it is information as it's happening. Uh, it's very much like Twitter in the sense that it, it's, it's people, when they're sharing information, you're seeing these things as they're happening. Now, in the past, what we saw a lot of with Facebook is as people were creating content, sharing content on Facebook, there was usually this, this time gap in between conversations where you'd post something to your wall and you know, a couple hours later maybe somebody replied. What's, what's awesome about the, about the ticker here is you see it coming through and people actually you know, updating their, their profiles, updating their timelines. You see all this activity happening in real time. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is what type of content actually appears in the ticker versus what appears in the news feed. The ticker is Facebook's answer to the content overload problem, 
right? I, I know Mashable released a study recently, and it was like actually like 2010, so that numbers are probably much higher now. But they were seeing about 20 million, 25 million pieces of content being shared every 20 minutes. So when you think about this, 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 this massive amount of content flowing through the news feed, you know, how do you not get overwhelmed or overloaded by this? So what Facebook decided to do was rather than bombard you in the news feed with every single status update, like you used to see with the most recent tab, they rolled out the ticker. So Chad, if you want to hover over uh, one of these status updates, I want to show everyone what happens here when you hover over something. So as these stories are happening here, you're able to actually preview them. You know, in this case, Virginia here, a picture of Virginia, you can jump in there, you can comment, you can like, you can begin to interact with Virginia as Virginia is actually, you know, participating or actually sharing content. So this type of real-time interaction, to me, and, and Chris, you can, you can talk about it a little bit too, but to me, it changes the experience on Facebook. It changes the way that we used to use Facebook to now it's much more real-time, and this is going to be really important when you're using Facebook to jump into live conversations. Um, so that's the reason I love Twitter. Yeah, let me, let, me, let, me say one thing, yeah, let me say one thing about that, Jimmy, because you just made me think of something, you know, literally as you're speaking there. I kind of have a little best practice for myself with Twitter that I really don't engage with people on Twitter that haven't been tweeting in like the last 30 seconds or like at least like the last five minutes because mm -hmm. it is such an instant kind of a platform. And so I think what happens in the news feed is, excuse me, in the new ticker, people are going to see it and get bothered by it. But I think takeaway number one, there's a competitive advantage and there's a you know special thing that happens when you engage with people around content that they just engaged with as opposed to a status update that I did yesterday that's kind of parked in your feed. So I think that's huge. I kind of think of this ticker as kind of like everybody I follow on Twitter and then kind of the feed now is going to be my list on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully that makes sense for people, but back to you. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's an excellent point. You know, one of the things I, I, I talked about before, Chris, which was, you know, imagine you have 15 minutes a day to market yourself on Facebook. That's all you got, 15 minutes in the morning and at, say, at night. Well, is it better to sort of like leave these messages for people or is it better to interact with these people live as, as they're actually using the platform? So for me, I think that, you know, a lot of people want to know how we hide, to it, hide, hide the ticker. I say we embrace it. I say we use this tool to actually interact and connect with people as they are actually on Facebook. And I think that can be an effective marketing tool as opposed to, say, the old way of using Facebook in which we would sort of play a little bit of phone tag leaving comments. It's much more of a Twitter feel. So that's, that's, what, that's what really my, my big takeaway here is let's embrace this. Let's forget about the fact that it may be a little bit annoying, and let's actually use this as a great marketing opportunity for us. Yeah, and, and let, me, let me say one last thing, Jimmy, because I've looked at some data recently with Darren Persinger about lead response time, and he's putting together some stuff on that. And when mm -hmm. you respond to people immediately, the numbers go through the roof. So I love what you just said there. Don't let this be a distraction, of course, but at the same time, don't let it sit there for no reason. And that kind of, I think, goes into one of the questions we've already been getting a million times. Can I turn this off if I wanted to? You just said basically that I shouldn't, but can I turn off the ticker if I wanted to, Jimmy? Yeah, there's, there's they got some Chrome extensions that you can use. Um, but you know, and this, is, this goes to a larger issue, Chris, which I see people actually trying to revert back to the old Facebook embrace change. <laughs> it, it's, it's only going in one direction here, everyone, and we have to embrace this and use this to, to our advantage. Let's not fight against it because, you know, ultimately, this is a platform we really don't control, so we can complain about it, we can, you know, say we don't like it, and, and we can install these Chrome extensions to hide it. I say we embrace it. I say we don't even spend a single second wasting our time thinking about hiding the ticker. No, you, you guys are right. You know, I'll, I'll jump in and I'll say the other day I was one of those people who said, this thing's driving me crazy. I mean, real estate agents, all the people who are out there who are using Facebook regularly, we're all distracted by the bright, shiny objects. So there was this thing just scrolling along the screen that was like that big squirrel that just kept running across my computer screen on me. I didn't know how to deal with it. But I saw something go by the other day from a friend of mine. I was able to put my cursor over it, pop it up, engage with them, post, and be involved in the conversation and get back to what I'm doing. I didn't have to now refresh my page. I didn't have to go to their page. I didn't have to do anything. The ticker was right there and made life a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. All right, so, so there's the ticker. Now, going from the ticker, Chris, if we go and we check your page out, there's this other new thing going on out there right now that subscribe. And a lot of people are asking questions about the subscribe button. Should I subscribe? What about people subscribing to me? What, what can we answer about subscribe? What is the subscribe button? How does it work? Tell us a little bit about that one. Sure. Well, for you know, one of the things that I think it really is addressing is that on your profile, 
they put the cap on the number of friends at 5,000. And, you know, I think Ben Kenny topped that out, Chad. I know a lot of people have topped that out. Obviously, at the point that you have 5,000 friends, let's keep it real. You know, you're marketing on Facebook at some level. You're not just, you know, unless you just have a big family. So, you know, if you have 5,000 people, to me, Facebook has said, okay, even though you've hit that limit or even though you might not want to be friends with somebody. So there's a lot of people that follow me on Twitter that I don't follow back, and that's just kind of how it is sometimes. So on Facebook, the way it's set up now is that somebody can subscribe to you, which would be kind of a variation of a friend request. You can see that you're basically subscribed, but they can subscribe to what they really want to see from you. So if you were to go right there, Chad, and click on either all updates or must, most updates, for me as the user, that's actually better for me than us being friends the way we, we are currently because I'm fighting edge rank to get into your news feed and I still will be moving forwards. But if you click that all updates or most updates, you've basically just, just like an RSS feed, you've now subscribed to my content. So if you have people that you want to follow more closely, it's a great option. If you have people that you want to follow that you don't want to friend up, it's a great option. It really, really, I think, is going to be useful. And the other thing I'm seeing here is if you actually uh, go down a little bit on my wall here, Chad, scroll down, um, and I'm going to find a status update. Keep going down a little further. Here we go. So if you go to the one there that has the 51 comments, and you start to scroll down through some of those comments, so it's right there at the bottom of the page now, just below Lori's post. If you'll pop open those comments, what you're going to see is that I feel like what's happening, and these are not all my friends, that's the point. If you keep scrolling down there for me uh, a little bit more, Chad, some of these people are actually a friend of a friend that's now just subscribed to me. And so they're actually, I'm building interaction, and I'm still able to get my links out to people, get my message out keep my name top of mind, but I'm not their friend. And I think that is a pretty fundamental change in kind of Facebook's original platform. So that's really all there is to subscribe. We don't need to spend a ton of time on it. You know, it, I think it's going to come down to subscribing to the right people that bring value to your life, like it always comes down to, and that'll segue nice into how important content still is. And then also, if you are a publisher, if you think of yourself as a content creator and distributor, which I certainly do and Jimmy does and I hope most real estate agents do, you would certainly want to see people subscribing to you. And you can even see right there, Bill Walton, who's friends with Julie Brown, commented on your link. That's on yours, Chad, and that's <coughs> live on the webinar. So those are new connections. A lot of agents call new connections prospects or leads. I like what I see with subscribe. Let me, let me, let me, great, I'm sorry, sorry, Jimmy, I just want to share, Wendy just shared a great comment. She says, you know, using subscribe, you can actually kind of stalk them until you decide if they're actually cool enough to want to add as a friend. What are your thoughts that's, on the subscribe, Jimmy? <laughs> uh, yeah, that, 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 that's, 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 a good, that's a good idea, Wendy, especially if you're just sort of getting to know these people. Uh, there's one thing I will add, Chris, just, and Chris did a great job explaining the importance of subscribe, but uh, I've been hearing a lot of sort of bad information about subscribe. When people subscribe to you, because you have to actually authorize this, it's not it's not going to be pre-installed on your on your timeline. You have to you know authorize the subscribe feature. Uh, when you do that, when people subscribe to you, they're not your friends. They're only subscribing to your public posts, and that's incredibly important for you to understand. So if you have private information that you're only sharing with with your friends or your 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 close uh, circle of friends in in a particular list, they're not going to have visibility to that in their news feed. They're only going to be subscribing to your public posts. So I want to just clear clear the air on that before we dive dive into the new news feed yeah. because that you is a bit what, Chad, Chad, why, don't, why don't we have Chad Chad hop up there like you're going to do a status update. So go to your page and you know pretend you're going to update your status. I think it'd be worth showing people um, you know exactly where that option is. So when Chad goes to update his status from you know his normal wall here, see the drop down where it says public? So that would be something where if I'm linking to an article I wrote or if I'm sending something out that's you know, not too personal, like a picture of my child or something really private, you know, I certainly want that to go public. Google Plus is encouraging public posting as well. Twitter, of course, is public posting. So this isn't like revolutionary, but bringing it to this big size platform sure is. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of sounds a lot like Google Circles and uh, what Google Plus was up to. The Facebook just kind of integrated into their world as well now for us. Very easy to decide who we're sending things to. Yeah, I, so. I, 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 I agree. You know, there's one thing. There's one last thing I'll mention about the, the subscribe button, and this may be. And Chris, we didn't get to talk about this before the session, but this may be a, a, a sign of things to come. Which is, up until now, the profiles on Facebook pages, which are now the timelines of Facebook pages, have never been indexed by the search engines. The, the, the public viewing won't, yes, but the, 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 the profile with all the content have never been indexed by the search engines because you know Facebook is now specifying that this is public. This can now be indexed. There may be some intangible, you know, SEO benefits here. But, you know, if you're actually using your personal profile, you know, to publish content. So um, something to pay attention to. Something that I guess we're going to be keeping an eye on because this is, I think, in my opinion, a major shift from the the closed circuit Facebook really used to be. So there's some great questions coming along, and, and I know we've got yeah, a Q and A at the end. Ask, but... yeah. yeah, Chad. I was just going to say, I know I, I I don't even see the questions. I'm glad you're manning that. I bet they're flying in, and probably a lot of really good feedback too. Just you know, people's impressions. I'm seeing all kinds of stuff on Twitter with the uh, pound FB changes. But we did actually uh, knowing that we were going to do this class, and there was going to be so much to cover. Katie Lance put together a full write-up. So basically, everything that we're talking about and doing on video, she did a full write-up. So I'm going to have Chad drop that in the chat, and you guys can bookmark that, share it out, comment on it. But I know there's so much to cover that uh, we wanted there to kind of be a guide to go along with the class. So I just wanted to plug that real quick. Perfect. And I just shared that with everyone that's out there. Getting some, some questions that I I know we want to wait till the end, but I do want to throw these questions at you guys because we're talking about the subscribe right now. Some people are asking, is there a way, can the person you subscribe to tell that you subscribe to them? So, Jimmy, if I go subscribe to you, if we're not friends, are you alerted? Do you know that I've now subscribed to you? Yeah, yes, y yes, you are alerted. And let me clarify something because Dylan just uh, tweeted in, 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 uh, on Facebook under the hashtag FB Changes. Uh, he made a correction here. Under the new timeline, the subscribe is going to be actually uh, it's going to be there. You don't have to you don't have to actually authorize it. Um, in the previous profile, you did. So that's that, thanks for the correction, Dylan. You actually will have the subscribe button already authorized. You can disable it, but it's going to come um, already pre-installed in the timeline. Um, when when someone subscribes to you on Facebook. Just like someone sending a friend request to you, you will you will receive a notification. So you can't, you know, in Wendy's case here, you can't really stalk people without them knowing. Um, you, you're, they're going to be notified. Okay, so they're going to know what's going on. And then the other question that comes with it is, how is Facebook deciding? Chris, you were saying this is a great way to fight that edge rank issue that we've all been talking about. But how does Facebook actually decide what is considered all? And then what is considered important when I choose what I'm going to subscribe to? How do they decide where that break is on things that you're posting? What's most updates and what's only important to updates? Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think, you know, it's kind of like the Google formula. I don't know that you'll ever figure it out completely. But what I would guess, which I think is kind of, kind of a nice feature, would be I'm going to put something out there to my people. And I typically am pretty decent at getting engagement and comments and likes. So Facebook, when they're saying what's important, I think they're probably going to push things that have already shown that they'll generate interaction as important. So I do a post, seven likes and five comments in the first 30 seconds. That triggers them to put that post into everybody that's subscribed to important things feeds. So it, we're going to get into this. It really is still going to mostly be about the quality of the content and you know taking the right actions. But these things have huge ramifications. I mean, let me say one last thing on subscribe and then. We have to get Jimmy on the new news feed. If I could go back to Tech Savvy Agent and have 20,000 people subscribed and, and saying, I want to see most or all updates, I can just tell everyone on the call that what that would have done for my traffic and what that will do for the traffic at Inman Next on Jimmy's site, on your site, it will substantially increase the traffic. The more people that subscribe to you, the less edge rank becomes an issue. So it's a huge deal. All right. Now, before we get on to the other stuff that we've got, you're talking about that I need to get some great content. And, and there's going to be ways that it's going to be harder for people to sometimes see what I'm up to on Facebook, or maybe they're going to be leaving me. Where could I get some great content and email addresses? What are some great ways to go about doing that? 
I'm just going to give you guys the shameless plug right now. So, Chris? I'll, I'll take it, no problem. I mean, here's one of the things <laughs> that we looked at, is that if content's going to be more important than ever, then you need to be kind of a filter for your community. So, you know, whoever your 300 friends on Facebook are, I don't know them, but I can tell you that there's a common thread in marketing across all verticals, which is the more helpful you are and the more valuable information you provide, the more likely you're going to get subscribed to, the more likely your links are going to get clicked, that they're going to get liked, that they're going to get comments. So there's two things that I wanted to show. One is that content matters so much that at Inman, we actually just built something called remessenger.com. And what's cool with this, and I'm plugging us, but this is the future of media. You can take content out of the back end of our site, and you can Facebook and tweet and email that out. So now all of a sudden, instead of it just being this one blog post that you've thrown together that you're not getting a bunch of love on, you can actually grab media, written, journalist composed, award-winning writers. You can pull that content into your sphere's world, and we think that's really powerful. You can, of course, also supplement it with all of your own custom content. So, you know, remessenger.com, that's one of the things that we're doing is we're going we're gonna to roll the dice that most real estate agents are too busy to be creating content all the time. So we just wanted to make our content super shareable, and uh, people should definitely check that out. And then the other thing about content is Facebook is super scary. People think it's going to get shut down half the time. You know, there's a rumor last week, Chad, that people are actually going to have to pay for Facebook. So one of the things that I think is critical, because it doesn't just say content matters, it says so does email. Jimmy, I want you to explain what you built, and I'll give you, a, you know, certainly a recommendation. How are you using Facebook to get emails so that things like edge rank and subscribe aren't as big of an issue? Before you do that, Jimmy, hang on. Before yep. you do that, because I definitely want to hear about it, I want to ask how many of the people that are on the webinar with us right now registered using the app similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now? Give me a yes if that's how you registered for the webinar today, that you saw that, you clicked on it, you joined, hopefully you then shared it with everybody else that was out there. Okay, so Jimmy, tell everybody about what you've got created here. Yeah, gr gr thanks Chris and thanks Chad. Uh, you know, for us, what inspired us to develop the, the conversion app, which what you're looking on the right-hand side was, we know that reach, reaching people was, was one of the biggest challenges uh, when you're using Facebook, right? Getting, getting top position in the news feed, making sure that you're reaching them and they're actually logged in. And what we found was essentially that you're only reaching at any given time between 3 and 7% of your fan base. So that's not really, you know, that's not really great in the grand scheme of things. You get 100 fans, you're only reaching 3 to 7 people. So how can you convert your fans, the people who are liking your page, how can you convert that into a lead and capture that person's email? So when you publish a piece of content, like if you're using an RA Messenger, and you want to share something to this, to this network, you're not just relying on your, your network of uh, fans, but you also can build up a list. And that's why we developed the conversion app here where you're looking on the right-hand side. Essentially, it's incredibly simple. A video and then a registration box right below it. The registration box is pre-filled out with all the person's information. They click one button, register, and you capture that lead. You receive an email notification with their email their name, their location, as well as a link to their Facebook personal profile. So the inspiration, Chad, and, and, and we actually are today just rolling this out of beta and making it available to the public, the inspiration was, you know, you can capture leads on Facebook. You've got to have the systems in place to do it. And you can't expect your, your, your fans to want to reach out to you. You have to have some system in place uh, to capture that lead. And that's really what inspired us to develop the conversion app. So, you know, I'm, ex I'm excited to roll it out to, to the public today. And yeah, we are here's, let me say one thing. Yeah, Chad, let me say one thing real quick about yeah. this. I want people that are on Twitter to think about this and tweet this out. Are you thinking about the user experience of your lead generation? Because I think that, you know, the more people that go through a funnel where it's a one click registration and they're done, the more they're going to want that on your site. So think about some of these things you're experiencing. You had a great example, Chad, with the, the way the ticker interacts where you don't have to really even leave and you can just do it and just be done. That's what people like. People don't want to have to fill out name, email, boom. So some of these really cool tools, you know, time is money with most successful people. I think these are two great options and, uh, and we definitely wanted to plug them because they're relevant. 
and important to everybody. You know, normally it's not we want to just be plugging something for the sake of plugging. These are great tools. I think are fantastic. If you want to know more, just email Jimmy at the MLS app so you can have more on that. And let's jump back into some of the stuff we're talking about. And we were talking about some of the control options already. So, before you before you dive into that chat, we actually I sure. want to go back to the news feed because we got to talk about the redesign of the news feed uh, before we oh, dive into control. Miss that? Yes. Let's uh, let's pull mine up here for you. Yeah, we have we have so much to cover today. I know we're going through everything pretty quickly here, but uh, I'll make this one quick because I want to make sure I just just highlight some of the, the changes here. We talked about the ticker. The news feed itself has changed. Uh, before we all we all remember top news and most recent. And we know, statistically speaking, that about 50% of people would use both, but most people only really use the top news. What Facebook decided to do was combine the two of them. Uh, essentially, they're just stacked on top of it. So when you log into Facebook, you're going to see the top stories. Now, the reason Chad is seeing recent stories is because he's been logged into Facebook for some time. But every time you log into Facebook for the first time, you're going to see you know, top stories since the last time you've logged in. So to go back to, to Chris's point here, um, you know, this importance of, the, the importance of great content, now that the news feeds are, are combined, they consolidated them, this makes providing excellent content, content that is going to be shareable, be worth sharing, worth talking about, worth engaging, that much more important. Because right now, this is, this, we basically have reduced the news feed in half. And only, you're only seeing a really subset of stories. So just to poll the audience here, you know, ask yourself, Look at your newsfeed right now. Do you feel like you're seeing less stories, less updates from the people you normally would see in the last couple of weeks here? Um, I have been. And you know, for me at least, there's one thing I want to make, one little tip before I pass it back to Chris here. One little tip I want to give you is photos matter a lot. As you can see here on, on Chad's newsfeed, you see that big photo right there. It looks like Lily Rainey of her, her child at that uh, PlayStation right there. You know, this, when you add a photo album, it, it, it pops out in the news feed. So when you're updating your page, when you're updating your, pro, your timeline, you know, are you including photos? Are you standing out? And you know, if you are using photos the right way, you will. So this right now to me is, is, is incredibly important. High quality content, you know, rich content, the content like photo albums and videos are going to stand out much more than just a link or you know, uh, I guess less, you know, less important content. And that, that's what I've been noticing is a lot more photos, it seems, are showing up on my feed. So, Chris, tell us about the importance of that quality content. You're, you're a master at it of actually bringing quality. People want to hear what you're saying. How can everyone else do the same thing as you're doing? Well, I think that, you know, at this point, I think we understand that it's about listening and providing value, not kind of pushing and crossing your fingers. You know, one of the things that I think really has been nice, and actually, Chad, click, you know, where you just see the update there from Rudy, click on that top right arrow that appears, because, you know, just to the right of where he updated, where you can kind of control um, what's happening there. So you can obviously get rid of that story now. You can unsubscribe from him immediately. Before, it was kind of like hide or block. Well, if you're putting in good content a lot, like maybe we'll say Rudy is, you could go right into getting all of his updates immediately or vice versa. And I think the problem in our business is probably going to be that we're about to have like a hide a That would be a great thing to tweet. We're about to have a real estate agent hide a on Facebook because it's just going to be so easy to do. And it's going to be so obvious when spam enters your nice little clean world here. So I think we need to really, really be careful of that. The other thing, Chad, that for me, I think is going to really help our industry clean up some of the kind of non-targeted marketing is going to be smart lists. So I see yours on the left there. Um, if you don't, I mean, unless you have some private ones, if you don't mind clicking on, uh, you know, <laughs> Bellingham area maybe. And I want to just explain how these work because certainly there's some things we're talking about right now that have gotten, uh, as far as user experience, that have been pulled directly from Google+. And this is one. Circles was just like, wow, why didn't Facebook think of that? Well, Facebook said, you know what? We've got all the data we need. We'll just make the lists for people. So that list of Bellingham people, those are only people that live within 10 miles right there at the top. So you know if you have a local event, and this is huge for me, if you're going to do an event and you're going to promote it, promote it locally to people that actually live near the event. That's like a 
pretty good best practice, right? So now, I guess you went to York University there. Uh, you know, you obviously have some family that Facebook knows about. So they just took your content. They just took your whole, you know, list of friends, and they basically made lists for you that were really relevant. Now, you can go deeper in you should, but I really, really think that the opportunity with smart lists is to really just be, again, putting out great content, but this time you're now putting it out to people that actually care. So smart lists, I mean, I think I would almost spend a day on that. One thing I wanted to say I forgot, Chad, is Jimmy did an article called the Facebook Posting Cheat Sheet, and I think this thing has like, you know, a couple thousand shares. It literally is a blueprint. If you're having any kind of challenge with what you're posting, getting looked at or engaged with or commented on, he really gives examples that are relevant to you guys, which is real estate agents and brokers. It's exactly what to post, how to word it, and why it's such a great strategy. So I really think you guys should all look at that article and bookmark that, share that. Huge best practices in there from Jimmy. But that's it for smart list. I think the thing we need to get to, and we're really kind of teasing the timeline for the end because the timeline is obviously the kind of what we're kind of looking at as a game changer. But Jimmy, I know privacy is always important. I know it's something that freaks people out. You know, I know one of the things that people have no idea about is this new open graph. And I really want you to get into privacy and what the heck just happened and what Mark Zuckerberg really just did. Yeah, absolutely. And one last thing I'll mention about one little practical tip in regards to lists uh, that I just want to say before we dive into privacy is, is two things. Uh, first, this is smart lists do not replace your previous friends list that you have. Uh, so those still exist. Uh, everybody here on the call right now should, should, after you're done the call, should create a list of past clients, current clients, prospects. Put these people into a list, and then, then when you're logging to Facebook, you're able to sort your uh, news feed to see all the status updates from everybody within your network and start engaging. It, it's, to me, it's such low-hanging fruit. It's such an awesome opportunity. If you want to stay top of mind and actually get business or more business, more referrals, stop sending these, these, these boring uh, pre-canned emails. Start engaging. Um, all right, Chad, let's jump over to privacy here because there's so much to cover here with privacy. Um, so on the top right-hand side under Home, you're going to want to click on that, and you're going to want to scroll down just a little bit right below Account Settings, and you want to click on Privacy Settings. Now, up until now... Hey, Jimmy, hey, Jimmy. Yep. Let me do one thing real quick, Jimmy. Let me just do one thing real quick. Because I'm like, I'm like myself personally overwhelmed and learning, you know, as we're doing this. I think a lot of the things that we're talking about today are just coming off the top of our head. Mm -hmm. Chad, can you, can you just see if people are enjoying this? Have them in the chat room say, I'm learning a lot. I'm liking it. If you're on Twitter, let us know. Because we love this format and we want to do a bunch of these, but we just always want to get a little bit of user feedback. Perfect. Well, they're, they're screaming at me that they're liking it, loving it, keep it coming. Why'd you even make a stop and type this in, Chris? We're still <laughs> learning. Don't slow Jimmy down. Right, uh, the, one thing, the one thing I love the most about what you were talking about with the lists, and, and one quick question, can people tell if you add them into a list? So if I have a list of people that I you know, have a name for, maybe I don't want them to know they're in that list, do people know that I put them in a smart list, Chris? That would be a negative. So as far as Google, so creepy yeah, ex-girlfriends, I could have exactly. a list that's called that, and so, they don't know that yeah. they're in that. So the subscribe stuff's a little bit more transparent on both parties. With the list feature, it's not going to say that you're in the past clients that I did a bad job for list. I don't think they'll get a picture <laughs> of that. Perfect. And I do appreciate you sharing with everybody, Chris, that they can now post only to people in their area, because I know, like you, I don't want to be invited to something that I am definitely not going to because it's an open house that's not anywhere near even the state I'm in. But Jimmy, let's jump back to you here and talk about these privacy settings. We've got them up on the screen here. This page always scares everybody if they even come near it. What were you going to tell us about privacy settings? Sure. Well, Facebook has made this much, much easier. We're going to blast through this real quickly, and luckily this is going to be recorded so you'll be able to go back and reference it. Uh, before, if you remember, if everyone remember the past privacy settings, they were really confusing. Every single option you had, you had like multiple different options, so there's basically like a thousand variables in which you can sort of share information. They consolidated everything. They made it much simpler. So, so Chad, go ahead and click on Edit Settings next to How You Connect. And I want to show everyone here on the call how this all works here. So as we pull this up here, it's really straightforward. Who can look you up by your timeline? Everyone, and if you click on it, Chad, you're going to see uh, the different options here. Everyone, friends of friends, 
friends of friends. Now, just to be clear, because I want to make sure everybody understands what friends of friends is. All this is is the people who are connected to your immediate friend network, which in most cases, guys, is, is going to be basically everybody. So if Chris is connected to 1,000 people and his 1,000 friends are connected to 1,000 people, you're talking literally hundreds of thousands of people. So just, just as a sort of takeaway here, friends of friends pretty much is public. You know, it's pretty much everybody. So um, you can go down the list here, who can send you friend requests, and you can sort of select, you know, who you want to actually have that available to send you friend requests. Who can actually send you Facebook messages? Now, Chris and I were talking about this earlier. You can actually, you can actually prevent people from just sending you spammy messages. You can only get messages from, you know, your friends. Who can post to your timeline? This one's really important because, uh, you know, for me at least, I'm really transparent. I use my Facebook personal profile for personal, but also for you know networking opportunities. And I don't really care who posts my profile or my timeline. But if you are using, you know, if you're using your personal profile or your personal timeline, excuse me, I keep calling it the profile. But if you, call it, if you start using your per, uh, your timeline for really personal use, you want to make sure that setting is set to only your friends, or even maybe less than that. And the last one here, Chad, is who can see your posts by others on your timeline. You want to go ahead and select, you know. Again, you can select friends, or again, you can just choose a list. You can choose only me, friends of friends, or public. Uh, and go ahead and close out of that chat. I just want to go over just two more things on the, on the privacy settings here. So the basic idea is this, is the information that you are, that people are sharing about you, the information that you share to people, and the information in terms of whether people can connect with you online or through, through your timeline, you can now really control uh, with, with unbelievable uh, you know, unbelievable certainty here in, in a lot of these cases. So the last thing I want to show is under how tags work, go ahead and click on this. Now I think we're all a little bit nervous when people tag us in videos or tag us in photos. I think uh, every single time I receive that notification, like so-and-so has tagged you, I immediately go see what it is. And now you can actually control this. So what's happening here is you can actually put it into review mode, meaning when someone tags you, it doesn't automatically post to your timeline. It then goes into a queue in which you can go ahead and review at a later time. And when we dive into timeline, I'll show you how that works. But this is really a cool feature because if you have some weird friends, some, some crazy friends that you don't really want them sharing old photos of you or old videos of you doing things, you can enable this feature to prevent that from happening. So that's one, one privacy feature, Chad, I think everybody here needs to enable like right now. So which one's option. that, Jimmy? You're talking yeah. my timeline review right here, or my tag review, just so we're clear I, for I, everybody. I would I would enable both of them <laughs> in, in both right. cases. Yeah. So here's what Jimmy's telling us: click on it, and then just turn on timeline review and turn on tag review. It was that quick. I've just turned mine on for everybody to see just how quickly you can do it. Well, Jimmy, I just want to say that you know you may have just saved my marriage, so thank you. <laughs> Well said, Chris. <laughs> All right. So, where else on privacy? If, uh, we got anything else that they immediately need to worry about? You know, there's the one last thing I'll, I'll mention here is under limit the audi the audience for past posts. Uh, so, what this means is n timeline is now giving you uh, you know more visibility, and we're going to be really kind of just jo jump into the timeline in just a moment. But timeline is giving your 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 connections more visibility than they ever have. In the past, the profile was simply like the last couple you know, hours or the last couple you know, weeks, depending on how active you were. And to actually see old stuff from two years ago, you'd have to click that button, you know, see old posts like 100 times, which no one would ever do unless they were a stalker. So what this is doing, which is really cool, is that now that all that information is visible, really easy to jump to through the timeline, you can actually limit these old posts and really kind of hide that information until you have a chance to go through and say, oh yeah, I want to show this or I don't want to show this. So I would also enable this last feature here because give yourself an opportunity to review your timeline to make sure nothing embarrassing is, is showing up there. And we see Chad doing it now. <laughs> there you go. Done. Yeah, and I think, and why, why don't we, uh, do you want to just go right into timeline, Jimmy? And uh, Yeah, let's dive right into it. Yeah, we have our own timeline we're dealing with because they, you know, really one of the things we talked about offline before we started was that it's interesting, you know, it seemed like Facebook got a little bit defensive when Google Plus launched and started doing so well, but I think that from what I can see, they're looking at this like offense is the best defense. So, you know, Google Plus was like, wow, it's maybe even as good or better than Facebook. No, sorry, Mark has too much data. 
look what he can do with the data. He has pretty smart people writing code for him. So I, I think that this is, you know, huge. And Chad, hop into my timeline, because I, I want to go through the timeline. We have some best, practice, best practices that we've already kind of picked up. I wrote an article that got a bunch of buzz in basically one day, if you can put that in there, about what are we going to do with this picture? Because what we've now come across is a situation where there's a billboard at the top of our profile. So once the timeline is turned on, we basically end up with an opportunity to put this really nice kind of panoramic image. And then you can see that there's the inset image of kind of the profile pic. So you have your timeline cover, which is what it's called, and then you have your profile picture. So what I wanted to throw out there to both of you guys is, what is going to be the best practice for this image? Because even mine, I kind of did this on purpose, you know, in the, in the nice image there, I'm talking to the CEO at Hootsuite, Real Estate Connect in San Fran. That's what I do for a living. It's what I'm passionate about. I love it. I'm proud of it. And then the profile pic is kind of me with the kids. But I can see this becoming a major issue. Um, if we can, Chad, grab that link to the uh, timeline debacle, basically, is the timeline going to end up being a disaster? But, you know, first thing I want to share, one kind of practical tip is the ideal dimensions for this image, because I think that's going to be a nice little best practice, is if you actually put in 849 by 312 for the pixels, that's going to be the ideal cover art image. And if you need any help resizing images, there's a website called Picnic, P-I-C-N-I-K.com. That's a great way to resize it. But you know, I think it's going to be prominent. Jimmy, what do you think is going to happen? And more importantly, what should we do with that big piece of real estate? Yeah, that, 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 that's, it's, it's, a, it's a great question in terms of whether, whether we should use this as a big billboard to advertise ourselves. Uh, my, my answer is a resounding no. Uh, and I, I know some people may disagree with me here, Chris, but I, I really feel that it, that sets the wrong tone. If you, if you think you're going to get on Facebook and use it as a broadcasting tool, use it as a tool in which you just tell everyone in the world that you're your greatest real estate agent in the universe, no one's going to listen. You see how easy it is to unsubscribe from people. It takes like 0.2 seconds to do. Uh, no one's going to care. No one's going to pay attention to these things. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, you want to tell a story about your life. And you know, real estate's a part of your life. I'm not saying hide the fact that you're a real estate agent, but throwing up a big image with you holding a, you know, a Remax balloon or a Keller Williams sign is just, it's just, it's not that in itself that's a bad idea. I think in itself it just sets a terrible tone. And it's a, a really bad mentality because social networking sites, it's not about you. It's about them. It's about making connections, building real relationships, and giving first and giving often. And if you go into the mindset, you know, I'm going to advertise, I, I, I think you're sort of shooting yourself in the foot before you really even get started, Chris. Yeah. Now, not everybody the has the timeline, guys. The service. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to jump in here because I'm seeing a whole bunch of, well, other real estate companies, of course, Jimmy didn't mean anything specific, so if you didn't mention your company, please. Uh, one of the things a lot of people are saying is they don't have timeline yet. What's the rollout date for this for the people who haven't jumped in and you know, hacked Facebook the way some of us have to get our timeline up and running? What is the official release date that we're hearing? I can take I, I, that. I'll, I'll take that, Jimmy. So it's supposed to start rolling out today just kind of automatically, and then it's going to go through basically – from what I'm hearing like Monday, I think it's going to roll out pretty quickly. A lot of times they'll say they roll it out over a couple weeks. We do have an article on the front page of uh, nmennext.com that Jimmy did. It's got like 2,600 shares on how to activate it right now. That's how we have ours up. So if you can uh, take a second and find that chat and drop that in there for people. But what I wanted to get back to is if you can go back to my timeline really quick, Chad, I want to show what I did to my timeline right away that I think people are going to probably want to do. And Jimmy talked about telling the story of your life. So notice on the right-hand column, it has all the most recent stuff. But if you look at the bottom there, Chad, see how it's got 1997? It's got 2002. It's got 2007. So there's a little bit of a variance. So if you click on 97 and just watch what will happen, it's going to basically go down to when I graduated from high school. So I just put the logo of my high school in there. But obviously, I could leave some additional content. These are what they call life moments. These are kind of 
uh, I forget the exact term, Jimmy, maybe you can help me on that one, but these are kind of like life moments or big they events. They call it uh, life events, I actually think it is. Okay, life so, events, yeah. Yeah, so this I is think. like a life, <laughs> a life event. And so I think what's going to happen is I know for me, I'm going to want to go find people's life events. So I haven't done a great job here. I just kind of put the image in. But if you think people are going to be looking at your life events, you might want to spend some time having a nice image. You might want to spend some time using the comment option to put some stuff in there. Here's where it gets powerful, Chad. Go to 02, 2002. So there's another life event there, which is graduating college. So hopefully people that haven't seen the timeline are starting to realize, OK, this is my old profile, but Facebook broke it down. And then go to 07, Chad. Because the life events that I, you know, matter the most to me, you know, there's a couple of them, right? Scroll down a little bit, and you can see, uh, you know, when my son was born, and I kind of just put in there his weight and stuff like that. So to me, the way that they've kind of visual, it's almost like they build us an infographic of our life, and I appreciate that. I think it's stunning. I think that there's a lot of opportunity here. But go to the top, and actually go to yours, Chad, and maybe we could just show people kind of. How do you add those types of events? Because those are pretty important. So it's just right there where you do your status. But it says milestones and experiences. So that would be a great place to put when you got your real estate license, maybe when you sold your first home, maybe when you started your team, you know, maybe when you hit 100 homes. Like Those are things that on your timeline, Chad can take any of these squares, and he can actually feature them. And then they become a little bit more panoramic. So you put the photo. I mean. What, I, what my takeaway was when I started experiencing this was they have so much more information on people than anybody else, but the first thing I wanted to do was give them more. I wanted to fill in the story of my life, and I think that's a huge deal, and I think it changes everything for marketing. I think it makes Facebook, you know, again, the 800-pound gorilla, and, uh, and I think timeline is stunning, but I want to hear you guys talk about it a little bit, and then I think we'll get to the Q&A and the open graph. Sure. Shoot, well, I, Jimmy. Yeah, there's the thing. Thanks, Chad. There's one. There's one thing I want to mention. Yeah, I wasn't trying to insult Remax. I, I just wanted to point out that it's sort of a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible place. I just thought Remax was the first company I thought came to my mind here. Um, you know, the thing with me is that you know context matters a lot when you're marketing yourself online. I feel a lot of people fall into the trap that they feel like they can't talk about real estate because if they do, it's going to become too salesy and too you know too direct, and it's going to turn people off. And what Chris was just mentioning, which I think is really important, is that. Real estate is part of your life. Uh, you know your first closings, or you know a, a really uh, you know a great closing with a, a couple that just bought their first homes. Featuring these like photos and these videos that you're compiling in your timeline is a great way to incorporate real estate without being like, hey, I'm the greatest real estate agent in the universe. You should use me. So you know I, I don't want you to avoid real estate, and I think this is really important. If all you do is talk about other things, no one's going to know you're an expert in real estate. So you want to we want to feature yeah. these things in a smart way. Uh, on yeah. your timeline. And so that's, also right that's, there, right, real quick, Jimmy, just the screen that you're on right now, Chad, see where it's got, you know, obviously, I mean, listen, cats are going to beat work every day of the week on Facebook. <laughs> you got to love cats. You know, so if you're tweeting, you know, cats do real well, but, you know, see where it says started work at IMSD and that's kind of featured, you know, right there would be an opportunity for more of maybe like a billboard type ad. It had a little bit about what IMSD is, the website, the phone number, because that's relevant to that timeline piece. That probably isn't relevant to the, you know, the most important thing in your life, which I think is you know, kind of what that cover is meant to be. So let me ask you both a question, because I'm getting a lot of questions coming in. Do I sit down this weekend and go back in time? Or do I just start now knowing where I'm moving forward and that I'm adding in these events? What are your thoughts on that, guys? Well, I, I'll, I'll start off, Chris. Um, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to go through and add everything. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a bit of a daunting task you know, once you start to get, getting into it. So um, I, I would do it when you have time. Go back and it's, especially these important things like when you're graduating and when you're starting your new job and some you know, really, really important events that happened in your past. I, I would highlight maybe the top ten and, and then really start becoming much more active uh, with, with your existing you know, timeline and start focusing on adding more content as you're going along here. Uh, as Chris mentioned, which I think is important, so I'm just going to re-mention it here or repeat it, is Facebook's putting a lot of weight in, in, in the visual elements here. Videos, photos, photo galleries. I could, is the, these are really, really important. So 
whenever possible, include these things because they tell much, a much ri richer story than just say a normal status update like I started work at IMSD. So um, whenever possible, you know, go through and make sure that you add photos, add videos if you have them, and start small and just you know, don't overwhelm yourself. That's my advice. I think it's great advice. All right. <laughs> and you know, yeah. my thing is, I think people are going to look back, right? I mean, for me personally, and this is one of the things that we're going to give away as kind of a best practice, there's a reason certain dates on that column are going to be there. So the second that you see kind of an odd date out, you know, that would be a good thing to click and kind of really get to know somebody through. So I'm, I'm excited about timelines, and I think it's really a cool opportunity. And, uh, and Chad, I mean, yours looks awesome already. You know, oh, excuse me. There's there's one there's one more thing I want to mention about timeline here um, that I think is really important. Chad, why don't you jump over to your timeline real quick for me, please? And there's one feature here that goes back to privacy. Here, as you can see, when Chad actually posts something on uh, on uh, on his timeline, if you scroll down on webinar, are you here? And Chad, I'm going to blow it up so I can see it on my, on my screen. But if you actually see that icon right next to the uh, timestamp. You'll see a way where you actually can click on that icon. No, right next to it where it says 35 minutes near Bellingham. You can actually go ahead and select that, and you can change the sharing options of posts on your timeline. So this is a really cool feature that's what they call inline sharing or inline privacy. Settings. They have sort of two names for it. But essentially, you can change who you're sharing information with on your timeline. So certain information you want to make public, and as you go back in, the, in time, like a year from, you know, from now, or even for back further, uh, you know, you're going to probably want to change some of these sharing options to make sure your information is really protected. So uh, that's the last thing I'll mention about timeline. Again, I just think it's such an awesome opportunity for us to do this right. I think Facebook has revised profiles. I think it gives us all a fresh start, and let's you know, re let's really embrace that. That's 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 my big takeaway here with timeline. Hey, uh, one thing I'll say too, Jimmy, and I'm I'm certainly willing to do this. I mean, there is so much to cover. We have a lot of people on the call. I'm happy to spend extra time for the Q&A as long as you guys are down. So if that's something that we need to make happen, because I know there's probably 8,000 questions. <laughs> there are you know, plenty. Yeah. So let's ask, is everybody OK if we hang on for 15 minutes over time and answer some questions for everybody? Let me know if that works for you guys. OK, there's definitely enough of them who are saying, don't go anywhere. Uh, OK, cool. My so, question so to you guys. Yeah, go Jimmy, for it, Chad. Or and and Chris, right off the bat, the first question that everybody's asking. I've seen this one go by a lot already. What about their business pages, fan pages, that situation? Is it going to look like this as well? Well, I would say why don't we uh, why don't we actually tease this a little bit, Chad, and pull up what we found on the slide. And you know, this is a perfect question to ask. I've seen kind of some concrete evidence that the answer is yes, but Mashable did a good article here with some mock-ups of what business pages would look like if they were able to incorporate the new timeline. And this is where it just really, really gets important. So here's one from Mercedes where you can see how integrated it is, kind of the header changed colors. Uh, click through to another one, Chad. This one I thought looked really neat with the Muppets, but you can see again, like Jimmy mentioned, look at the multimedia, look at the you know ability to hit play there on the video right inside the timeline. I think Red Bull's got one in here, right? Mm-hmm. Here they come. Yeah, it looks I mean, awesome. Yeah, so I mean, if it, yeah, I mean, if you look at that and you're a brand and you don't get excited, I don't really know what to tell you. I mean, the <laughs> the the ability to manage Facebook pages. It's been a huge win for me and for Enman and for Jimmy and everybody, but it really has never been the easiest thing to do. And it really was tough design-wise. I mean, that Harley one just looks absolutely stunning. So this is going to segue kind of nicely into, you know, I'd love to hear Jimmy's thoughts on the business pages and then a, well, couple, you know, a couple of things that we're doing specifically to help people with those. A absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Uh, you know, the one thing I, I will say, you know, this, this obviously we have, um, you know, we see, we're looking at these business pages. We, we don't know when that's actually going to take place, when they're actually going to roll out a timeline version for business pages. What we do know and why, and why we're making this prediction that this is going to happen is 
in the past, every single time they've updated the Facebook personal profiles, they've rolled out a very similar, if not identical, version on business pages. So they've, they haven't given us any indication that this is going to be coming, uh, but we suspect that everyone is going to love the timeline, or the majority of people will love the timeline, and we have a, you know, strong evidence to support that the fact that this will be available to business pages uh, we, we expect in the near future. And you know what's, what's great about this, at least in my opinion, is that this really highlights the people who are doing it right, the people who are investing in, in their pages, who are investing in making real connections and sharing really valuable information, are going to stand out much more than, say, someone who just sort of phones it in. And um, in my opinion, at least, that's great for us here on the call. If you're on this call right now, obviously you want to learn about how to market yourself on Facebook. And for me, at least, um, that, you know, the timeline, it puts everything on display, everything's so easy to get to, uh, and it's much more accessible than it ever has been in the past. And I think that's really great news for all of us who work really hard to make connections and build relationships online. Uh, I think that's nothing but good news for us. Yeah, it's great news for sure. And, you know, the other thing I would say is, you know, we talk about this. One of the things that a lot of companies and a lot of brands and marketers have a challenge doing is showing the story behind the business showing the timeline. So, uh, for example, I, I learned recently that like in 1906, Coldwell Banker was formed because there was a fire in San Francisco and this one guy just said, I'm going to just help everybody that was in trouble from that fire and all of a sudden now there's a 105 year old brand and I think people would be interested in that. I think people would go back and look at how a company started. I think that the video that we've been preaching that you should do, the importance of the quality of your images, your consistency of your updating, I think all of those things become a lot more important and I think that the people that put the time in the last couple of years are going to reap the benefits. Um, I wanted to, we're going to do the Q&A, we missed a lot of stuff that we'll hopefully cover in the Q&A, but we did have a couple of things here. Jimmy, why don't you talk about what you're doing because I love the idea that you came up with, knowing mm -hmm. that this is most likely going to be coming up as a business page option and then also just knowing how challenging it is for agents to generate real leads and closings from Facebook. Talk about what you're doing with the page review because I think it's pretty neat. I think a lot of people want to do it. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, you know, for me, uh, one of the things I've been, we've been doing quite a bit of webinars over the last uh, you know, 16 months now, and what I what I found is a lot of these ideas that we're sharing with you today, they all make sense. You you get it, but when it comes down to it, when you actually you know open up your page and you begin to figure out how to market yourself. There's a sort of now what moment, as I call it, uh, where you really don't know what you're doing. You, you, you have a general idea, but there's no long-term strategy. There's no systems in place. So what I began doing last week, and the, the feedback's been amazing since then, is uh, you know, we have these one-on-one -on -one consultations where I sit down for an hour, and we, we do a webinar like this one-on-one, -on -one, and we review your marketing. We review what you're doing on Facebook, and we come up with a custom strategy and a plan to help you actually effectively market yourself on Facebook. What I find time and time again is this is that most people, uh, most realtors, simply don't have all day to market themselves on Facebook. They may only have an hour or, or half an hour. And what they, they want to do is they want to you know, get more out of that. So that's really the, the main focus, Chris, is you know, how do you get more fans? How do you increase the engagement? How do you ultimately get business from it? And these things, to me, are absolutely critical. Because I'll give you one little insight, or one little piece of insight here, Chris. I took a poll recently on my uh, business page. I said, you know, how, how much time are you spending on Facebook? Mm -hmm. And Right now, the, the average time from all the people who responded was about an hour to an hour and a half. So if you think about that for a moment, over the course of a year, you're going to be putting in four to five to six hundred hours of work into this platform. And what do you have to show for it? And what, what, what results do you have? And, and to me, I, I think, unfortunately, what's happened is we've, we've sort of had this you know, perception out there that you know, Facebook's kind of like a backyard barbecue, and we've let ourselves off the hook for accountability. And for me, at least, you know, if you're going to be spending this massive amount of time on Facebook, how can you actually turn this into a way where you can make money, where you can sell more homes, versus just sort of being a major time suck? And that's really the, the, the inspiration behind doing it, Chris, and that's really what we set out to do with these Express Reviews. Cool. Well, I support it. If anybody wants to do that with Jimmy, you just go to jimmymackin.net right there on the screen. Anybody that was interested in the conversion tab that we showed earlier, you can just send Jimmy an email on that. But I highly recommend that. I mean, you're getting an hour of Jimmy's time one-on-one, -on -one, and I think that's what most people need. I mean, these are great formats. One of the things we're doing at Inman is we just announced three webinars very much in the same style as what we just did here. So unfortunately, 
you know, I just don't have the ability like Jimmy does to work one-on-one -on -one with agents. So again, if you have, if that would help you take advantage of it, but starting next week, over the next few weeks, we're going to do a Facebook marketing and strategy class, which is going to be one week from today. We're going to do a full class on Twitter and a full class on blogging. We got a great sponsor for that, homefinder.com. Anybody that wants to go to that, we're going to do two things. We're going to put the link in the chat, and then we're going to also ask you to go to facebook.com slash Inman next and just write on our wall and ask us for that link because they're all three free, but these we're going to promote with email marketing. We're going to promote them all over the place. They do fill up, and uh, I'm excited to do those. So it's going to be not so much here's all the new changes like today. It's going to be here's the strategies agents have been using that's been helping them get a return and kind of engage and make money quickly. So that's a good thing. And then one last plug before the Q&A. We're going to be in Austin, Boston, Tampa, and Boise for Agent Reboot over the next uh, four to six weeks. If you're anywhere near any of those areas, please let me know that you'd like information. And uh, Jimmy and I are actually presenting together in Boston. Uh, Austin and Tampa and Boise have great lineups. And then if you're interested in our primary conference, which is called Inman Real Estate Connect, the last day to get the big discount on that is September 30th. So hopefully Chad can drop a few links. And uh, we'd love you guys to support everything we're doing. It's interesting. We're basically, our sales pitch during our training is that we'd love you to join us for more training. And I think that's why we're doing a good job, Jimmy. What about you? Yeah, we, we, you know, we, I look back at the, everything we've just covered, Chris, and I'm sort of like my head spinning, honestly, because there's just been so many changes here, and I'm, I'm excited to dive into the Q&A here because, uh, like Chris said, you know, we want we want to be doing more of these things and, and more more of these uh, more of these training events as we go forward here because ultimately we know how much time we're spending on Facebook, we know how much time we're spending on Twitter and through blogging, and ultimately our goal is to essentially make sure you're getting the most out of it and uh, really get, you know, to be effective with it. So that's, that's ultimately what we want to, want to achieve within these webinars. So, Chad, I'm, I'm ready to yeah, dive into Q&A. Yes, extra time. Thanks for hearing us out. Let's do this.